Hi everyone, by the suggestion of the student, I do the cheekbone or the which is known as the pneumatic bone, which is the maxilla. Now you see the, our upper jaw that is formed by the maxilla, which contains each maxilla contains eight teeth on either side and you see this is the maxilla you can feel the maxilla by your own hand hmm. and this is important in sinusitis because by pressing the maxilla if there is pain that means the patient suffering from sinusitis next you will see come to the maxilla you will see the maxilla in case of newborn baby this is the skeleton of newborn baby you see this small thing is the maxilla can you imagine how small it is and this is the nasal cavity now this is the adult maxilla which is the example of the pneumatic bone why it is called pneumatic bone because it presents a cavity within which is known as the maxillary air sinus so it makes them lighter now this why there is the presence of pneumatic bone uh, on the side of the face because you see our voice becomes very much clear there is resonance within the air present within the pneumatic bone and this makes our voice beautiful next is that you see this maxilla it has got a body and processes the processes are from the anterior part of the body there is a process which is known as the frontal process of maxilla next you will see on the lateral aspect there is a process and this is known as the zygomatic process of the maxilla articulating with the zygomatic bone and this is the palatine process on the medial aspect a shelf like projection this is known as the palatine process it along with the another palatine process of the opposite bone it forms the heart palate and you will see this teeth like you see the presence of teeth here this is the alveolar process of the maxilla so these are the different processes present uh, arises from the body next you will see the body present the different surfaces now the superior one is known as the orbital surface of the body of the maxilla now you see this is the sagittal section of a um, bone that is the skull here you will see this superior surface or orbital surface forms the floor of the orbit next you will see in front of the orbital surface it leads to a foramen the name of the foramen is infraorbital foramen through which a nerve comes out which is known as the infraorbital nerve and this is very important for the physiotherapy they stimulate the muscles of the um, paralyzed person to actually make them active so this is the orbital surface next the anterior surface you will see the anterior surface of the maxilla there are some elevation and depression the elevation is due to a teeth which is known as the canine teeth it is present here you will see this is the elevation for the canine teeth and behind this canine teeth there is the canine fossa next you will see from the canine fossa there is attachment of some small muscles you know the muscles of facial expression they are very small but their expression is more you will know you can understand the mood of a person by seeing the facial muscle and this is they are very thin and small muscles and as there is no deep fascia in the face so it is more expressive so this is the anterior surface 
Next is the posterior surface. This posterior surface is also known as infratemporal surface. Why it is called infratemporal surface? Because you see, I will show this skull from behind. In the behind, you will see this infratemporal surface is divided into two parts. The lateral part is known as the infratemporal fossa and the medial one is known as the pterygopalatine fossa. So this is the pterygopalatine fossa and this is the infratemporal fossa. And you know that from the infratemporal fossa, there is the attachment of the lateral pterygoid muscle, that is the muscles of mastication. Next thing, you will see in the posterior surface below, there is an elevated area. In some bone, it is elevated, but here it is depressed. Why? It is elevated because due to the last molar teeth. And it is depressed here because there is extraction of the teeth from the third molar teeth. And this area is depressed. Sometimes this is so thin that this area may become fractured during the extraction of the teeth. Next, the, you will see the palatine surface. Now the palatine surface you will see, it has got a superior part and an inferior part. The inferior part, it forms the roof of the oral cavity, the mouth, mouth cavity. And this la superior part, it forms the nasal cavity. So nose and the oral cavity, they are separated by the palatine process of the maxilla as well as by the horizontal process of the palatine bone. So these are the uh, surfaces you will see here. Next you will see here there is a large maxillary ear sinus but in the articulated skeleton this ear sinus is reduced in size. How it is reduced? It is reduced you see here. Now you will see, I will show you the maxillary ear sinus. Here the bone is cut and it is retracted. So you see what is the depth of the sinus it is. In sinusitis, most of the collection occurs in the maxillary ear sinus. And that is very painful. This pain is radiating to the eye also because it is related to the floor of the eye. So there will be the removal of that uh, material through the nasal root. This is the nasal root and you will see this ostium that means the maxillary ear sinus here. You will see how big it was. But here it is reduced in size by the um, bone that is the palatine process of the inferior nasal concha and there is also the lacrimal bone here you will get the lacrimal bone here the lacrimal sac is situated very small bone it is so all this reduces this opening and further it is reduced by the mucous membrane so this is the uh, maxillary air sinus. Next you will see this frontal process of the maxilla. It articulates with the bone which is known as the frontal bone that forms the head, head the forehead. You see this is the frontal process of the maxilla and this junction of the frontonasal process in this region is known as the nasian which is important for uh, measuring the length of the skull. So this is the uh, frontal process of the maxilla. The medial aspect of the frontal process, there is attachment of the concha. Which concha? The inferior nasal concha, which is a separate piece of bone. Another is the uh, superior and middle nasal concha, that is the part of the ethmoid bone. Now, how will you hold the bone in anatomical position? 
you will hold the bone in such a way that the teeth should be directed below. This frontal process of the maxilla is situated on the anterior aspect and it is separated from the medial aspect by means of a notch which is known as the nasal notch. And you will see here that uh, this maxillary tuberosity is behind and this zygomatic process of the maxilla is on the lateral aspect. You see this is you see the zygomatic bone which forms the malar prominence and this is the frontozygomatic suture. And you will see from the alveolar process there is attachment of a muscle very uh, important muscle which is known as the buccinator. You know what is the action of the buccinator? So this vaccinator, it allows the mouth to bloat it up. But in paralysis, what you will see, there you cannot bloat it. So there will be uh, opening of the mouth. Good day. I am Professor Shivani Mojumdar. I am teaching anatomy for last 40 years. I have three books, exam oriented text, anatomy at a glance. It is just released the third edition and you will get it in the channel description. Thank you everyone.